other influencer in fact was obviously the words of Bob Geldof who's obviously raised a great deal of awareness about this particular issue and it's the old chestnut that everybody uses you know dads can't be trusted to look after their kids because they're climbing cranes well that's the argument they used about Mahatma Gandhi in Indi India when they said Indians don't deserve I independence it's the same argument they used about suffragettes when they were throwing themselves in front of horses God forbid women have the vote. Um, you are trying to get this guy down he's been up there quite long enough um, do you think he'll come down tonight? Uh, well, I don't know. We're going to give it a damn good go. We're going to try and bring him down and do our best, Richard. OK. Well, thanks for being there. Nice to Pleasure. Talk to you. Thank you, Matt. Uh, if antagonism is uh, causing the Sun to come out today and support the campaign, if antagonism is causing Sir Bob Geldof to come out and support the campaign, I even noticed that Spider-Man came second in the London of the Year campaign. I think people recognise the fact that children need the love and care of both parents, particularly at this time of year, when all we want to do is be dads to our children. Should fathers have more rights? Hello, I'm Nadia Sawala. Welcome to Now You're Talking. If you look at the figures to start with, 97% of women have their residency orders given to them straight away. Uh, therefore, the father don't stand a chance before you even given one. What's been your experience? Uh, two and a half years of fighting the legal system, um, getting nowhere fast. Um, crying in the corner every time you come out of the courtroom. And what happened I, when you did? We didn't go to court because right. I accepted the fact that I wasn't going to win in court. So I negotiated with her and I got one weekend in two. And I said, look, if I give you some extra maintenance, will you allow me an extra afternoon a week? And she said, yes. There isn't a presumption that what the woman says is right. She has to prove that and there is no, evidence. No. Would you agree with that, Martin? No, 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 no. no that, is, that is wrong. The family courts operate on um, a balance of probabilities system. Yeah. Exactly. Unlike a criminal court where there is a weighing of evidence and a testing of evidence. If a woman goes into court and makes an allegation, then it is probably true. And it is then left with the father to go away and prove his innocent. And like my friend here just said, by the time you come back to court with that evidence to prove your innocence, the case has moved on. And it's not yeah, and relevant. how much time has moved on as well? Well, we're, we're sometimes talking three and four months. Yeah. It could be as long as a year. And all of this is, is eating into the, the child's life and, and taking away time with its parent law. They put the delays in because the longer it takes, the more they earn out of it. And that is unacceptable. Pardon me, I just want to move on to you. What, what happens when, uh, when your experience, when mo mothers are in breach of contact? How do the courts deal with that? Well, they don't actually do anything, not for a, a long, long time. I mean, you, What's the, happened with you? Well, uh, uh, I'm not quite sure whether I can talk about yeah. my case, but in general, um, mothers can continually breach contact orders and nothing happens, nothing happens at all. Would you mind just holding the end of this? I have... Uh, uh, okay. 